on. The button has been clicked. Oh, oh, oh. The button. Do you carry Grant? Do you carry Grant? I, this is carry Grant. That's a little rough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Did that work? It's not your best. Let me haul out a sound check. <laughs> I, I, this is, <laughs> I, it's remarkably uh, similar to your Indiana Jones. No, completely different. <laughs> it's See, this, remarkably listen similar. Listen close. Listen close, though. This is okay, my Indiana try again. Jones. I'll close my eyes. I, this is Indiana Jones. See? Completely different. This is my Cary Grant impression. Hey, this is Cary Grant. See? They are different. Okay. Completely different. All right. Hey, this is John Wayne. See? Completely different. Dice-O-Rama is after turn four, so don't let us forget. Jen Stewart. And it's not dice rama it's a hat draw. Oh, I'm sorry, hat it's draw. It's the old hat draw. The pith. Pith of doom. Doom pith. If you know what I mean. Hey, everybody. So, this is going to be uh, really hey, wild today. It's Diego's first live. What happened? What, 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 what? Get your glasses. Diego! Hola, Diego! Tolemachus! Charlie Stout! Jim Stout! Damien Larson! This is his day job, Charlie. Day <laughs> Keep your day job, Dave. That's not, this is, this is it. all we got. This, this, is, this is it. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment <laughs> since you're appreciating my day job. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. Jim Stute. Bri G. We're going to do the old drawing today. Ooh. We're going to give away three dangles. Three dangles today. Gosh, I don't know how this is going to go. This could go super, super poorly. This is a really hard scenario. If you're if you're new to Pulp Alley, um, make Should sure. I shuffle, please? Do what? Should I shuffle? If yeah, yeah. Thank you. If you're new to Pulp Alley, this is not a good scenario to start with. Um, Probably not a good one to play solo either. It's it's not a good one to play solo. Not with one league. I think if you're gonna play this scenario solo, you you probably ought to put a couple leagues out there. Um, even though, even though one league does have to do it all, having that, one of the things you could do if you have two leagues out there is that you could use one of the leagues to feed to the devouring, uh, beast. Mm -hmm. We should, are we started? Not yet. We have several okay. seconds. Yeah, we're going to go live seconds. here officially, and then I'm going to end up repeating a lot of what I just said. Cause... So pretend you forgot it? Yeah, don't. We yeah, didn't say yeah. it? Yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't. Five seconds. And... <sighs> go. Hey, everybody. This is Dave here at Paul Valley, and I am with the world's uh, uh, most uh, uh, dangerous Bessie. Bam. So, uh, we're going to be playing a live game of Pulp Alley today. And so, once a month, we're going to try to do a solo game specifically for y'all. So, we are actually using for this one, we're not just playing it with one league. We're not just playing it against this the scenario. We're playing it with the solo deck. And that yep. changes a lot of stuff. So, you could probably do this scenario, you know, without the solo deck. Pulp Alley, when it was originally designed, you know, we played a lot of solo games before we even developed the full, complete solo rules. Uh, so, there are folks out there that play solo and just use the fortune deck, and you can do that. The, the solo rules kind of tighten a lot of those questions up that you could run into when you're playing solo however if you're if you're not using the the solo deck pulp alley is a tabletop adventure game it's really designed for the breadth of the pulp genre and that means it's there for fantasy and horror and sci-fi and war tales 
and swashbuckling and uh, adventure stories and, you know, sea tales and the, the, the spicy stories. So Pulp Alley covers the whole breadth of the pulp genre. It's not simply for playing in the 1930s. You have to remember that H.P. Lovecraft's horror stories, there were a lot of horror magazines that were pulp magazines. A lot of sci-fi stories and a lot of uh, the original fantasy stories. Robert E. Howard's Conan was a pulp story. It was published originally in pulp magazines, as were a lot of fantasy stories. So when we talk about pulp, we're talking about the stories that were printed in the pulp magazines. We're not talking about a small, you know, interwar 19... Uh, 20s to 1940s sort of time period. And for today, we're going even beyond that. We're doing a Middle Earth setting. Mm -hmm. So we have Mr. Bilbo Baggins himself showing up on the Pulp Alley stage today. So uh, Mr. Bilbo Baggins uh, located about right here. He has his friend Speck, also from Hobbiton, right there. Over here we have Valene the Elf, fa conveniently facing away. She's a little camera shy. And we have her friend Hilda here uh, as well. Hildy! Yeah, good Hilly is here too. All right, so we are going to be using some spells today. Uh, I am trying out uh, some different spells than Valene had last time because, you know, that's this is all part of the playtesting. So, uh, as far as the magic stuff is concerned, remember that that stuff is subject to change. It can, can be altered at any time. So, for the record, uh, for those of you playing along at home, this is a scenario that was published way back in two, about four years ago, 2020, part of the Scenario of the Month series, and this was Scenario of the Month number 34. Four. So this scenario can be played in multiple genres, and we have set it in lots oh, of yeah. different places. Today, it's in uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth setting mm -hmm. and uh, reskin. We don't have a lot of special rules for it because, remember, Pulp Alley was designed for this. You don't have to come up with a whole bunch of new special rules just because you want to play today in... Uh, Robert E. Howard's uh, Conan stories, and tomorrow you want to do, uh, you know, sci-fi, and then you want to do horror stories. You could do all of those seamlessly with pulp, yep. which means that it would be a lot of fun to do a time traveling uh, campaign mm -hmm. with this, all a Doctor Who sort of idea as well, where you go from the, all all those sort of different settings. Yep, for sure. Okay. So, this is a really hard scenario, and, yeah. and, and not only is it really hard, but playing it solo is really not recommended. I believe there's even a disclaimer on this scenario that says, don't try this <laughs> on your own. It's actually recommended to use, you know, at least two leagues. You're going to have a tough time sometimes with even three or four leagues. And if you have more leagues, then you can have pick out one or two leagues to do the scenario and then have one of the leagues try and deal with the huge, scary monster that wants to destroy everything on the Ooh, table. Oh, look at that. And in lady. this scenario, we're using a Lucid Eye miniature uh, and we're calling her Maeve the Borrow Queen. So the mystery here is there are four minor plot points located around the table. This is a minor plot point. And for the record, it is these little skeletons, not the yellow dots. But so this skeleton, we got to talk to him. We got to talk to a head on a stick over here. Um, for the random event, I rolled displaced. So although we were, the plot point originally started there, it got displaced over here to the pumpkins. So the skeleton wandered a little bit, and we have one taking a nap over here that we're going to have to jog. So what I've got to do in this, switch, what i got to do in this is we have to complete each one of those minor plot points, mm -hmm. 
then that will make the major plot point appear somewhere towards the center of the table, and then so someone's got to go over there and get it. Yep. And that's what stops the Borrow Queen. That's what actually ends the Borrow Queen uh, for good, because just attacking her, just uh, you know, defeating her through combat means nothing. Means very, very little. All that means is she will reappear next turn, completely healed. At a totally different place where you have no idea where. Right, right. So fighting her is not the goal of this scenario. Yeah. It is surviving her long enough for you to distracting uh, distract her, her and surviving. And if you think it's easy to distract her, look out because the yellow cards will ruin this game for you. The yellow cards are very, very It's evil. almost like <laughs> some horrible, curmudgeonly awful man created this just to snicker and laugh at all <laughs> the destruction that happens. <sighs> all right, all right, lady. All right, all right. Uh, so, scenario number 34 out of the Scenario of the Month series. It's available over, of course, on the Pulp Alley store. Let's get this started. We're Let's starting with turn number one. This is an eight-turn scenario. Let's get our handy-dandy turn counter out here. And we're also, can't forget that we draw a yellow card at the beginning, so we don't draw a solo card for the very first character. Okay. Okay. Because that replaces the solo card. Hmm. Okay. So who are you going to activate first? Hmm. I think I'm going to activate Hilda first. Okay. You ready for that yellow card? I'm ready for that yellow, yellow card. card. It's right here. Stay in the light. Until the end of this turn, all areas of darkness are perilous instead of difficult. Well, that's that's horrible. Because... Um, I didn't explain this to you, so I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. Part of the ritual of defeating the Horror Queen it was to place these eight fires. And for the scenario, they are located by the yellow dots. Those are the eight fires that are located around the table. That's what helps uh, the, the ritual of her destruction, basically, that Valene is, is plotting here. Um... So those areas are about six inches in diameter of light. Everywhere else on the table is difficult. However, in this for this particular turn, as as this as the ritual gets started, the dark areas are even scarier and they're gonna be perilous areas. And that's that's gonna be horrible because what that means is every character is gonna take a peril as soon as they activate. In addition to that, it's gonna prevent the characters from being able to run. Uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna be really bad. All right, so uh, Valene, uh, or I'm sorry, Hilly will continue her activation and that means she will get a peril. Uh, so, we're just going to take a peril off the top. One with cunning. Okay. That's not, that's not her bad spot, I don't think. Yeah, she's got three die eight in cunning. So that's not bad. So she's going to have to roll three die eight with cunning. We already have that set there. Oh. One with cunning. She has three die eight in cunning. Oh, Ooh, barely got barely, it. Just barely got that one. Ooh, that Don't forget close. to shift that camera so you can see her. Okay. All right. And then she'll continue her activation. Since uh, she is... Gosh, I don't know. I guess I'm going to have her just... Cont I'm going to have her head towards that plot point. Okay. Doggone it, we need to split up and go after multiple plot points. Yep. But the fact that I can't run this turn is really bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to move her six inches in that direction towards the light. Okay, good idea. Try and get a little bit closer to it. Okay. What about Valene? No, I think I'm going to activate uh, Bilbo next. Okay. Let's try Bilbo. He gets a... So he'll get a solo uh -huh. card. 
and stand firm. So that's going to create a challenge. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so he's going to have to roll for the challenge at the bottom of the card. He'll be using his finesse. He has four die eight in finesse. He's going to get have to get two of these. And he does. So he gets two, and that becomes an attach card. What it says is if he passes the challenge, the character's recovery checks are shifted up uh, for the duration of the scenario. Now, that probably won't last for the whole scenario because things have a tendency to go awry in a solo game. So you have to be prepared for that and understand that the, all the clever plans and everything quickly fall apart because the solo cards and the yellow cards will cause all kinds of havoc. That gives me a six inch move, so I'll just head six inches off in this direction here. Hopefully getting, no, he's still, he's still not in range of anything over there. All right, I guess the next one I'm going to activate will be, I'll go ahead and do uh, spec next. So, so he gets a solo. Solo. He gets a watch your head. Okay, so that means he's going to have to roll for that peril. Um, one with finesse. Well, he has three as one dice in finesse. Okay, he's going to try to dodge it. With he's going to try and dodge it with three okay. dice six. Did that, did, did my circle shift? Why is it so far off to the side? I don't know. Oh, it's not taped down is why. Okay, so he made his, he made the peril. Now that was just for the solo card. Yep. So he yeah. still has to do his for activating in a in the perilous in area. The perilous area. Yep. Okay. Double down. One with might, and he only has one dice in might. Oh, I'm gonna take my one inch move when I uh, okay. when I pass up peril. I'll move an inch towards that light over there. Okay. Same thing here. I'll just do a, a uh, dodge. Okay, dodged it as well, and I'll take another inch move. Okay, sounds good. So, Valene is last. That means Valene is last, as she will not get a solo card. No, but she does have to do her... Or three. When she activates, she'll get a, a peril, because she's activating a perilous area. Uh, two with finesse or cunning. Two with finesse or cunning. And she has cunning of four die eight. So she's going to be using her cunning here. I should put some tape on that. Yeah, probably. Okay. All right. Uh, four die eight, and she needs two of these. And she does not. Son of a gun. Wow. Well. Let's see. She is crafty, so she's going to get a reroll. There we go. Let's see if I can get a reroll on it. And she does. Yay. i got to get some tape for that. So it stops moving around. All right, so she'll continue her activation. All right. So she still gets to go. I guess. I'm going to move her six inches towards, um... Want me to peel it and stick it, or...? So we don't need that held in place, right? Mm, nope. Okay. Oh, do you want... Oh, no. Do you want overhead, or...? I'm fine. Okay. Hello, Edward Hooper. Edward Hooper! Okay. Uh, Bailey, I guess I'm going to move her towards the towards the plot point. Good idea. And then she's going to cast something. She gets back into these stones here. Okay, what is she going to cast? I think we're going to try to cast Abscutum. Okay. 
Abscutum is cast using her might. Okay, well, she's got three die eight. And I need to get at least one success. Oh, she gets three successes. Nice. So that's going to put three counters on that spell. Now, I don't know that it's terribly important important for this scenario because I'm not sure that that will ever come down. Yeah. Um, now spells obscutum. Spells have uh, obviously this is a play test for our, our new magic rules that are coming out hopefully this year. Uh, who knows though. Um, so there are spells that can knock other spells down. Uh, there are other ways that spells can be stopped, but for the most part, uh, a lot of enchantments, once they are cast, they will remain up until the end of the scenario. So they don't just pop up and then go away mm -hmm. uh, normally. Okay, spells so that are cast... Spells that are cast on enemy characters are much harder to maintain, but spells that you cast on yourself are a lot easier to uh, to keep in play. Yeah. All right. So I did that too. Okay. That ends turn number one. Uh, oh, that was a pretty your, pretty rough turn. Doesn't she get to go? Who are you talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What's this card? That's doing the attach card for. Yes, 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 yes. So her move, she's really not going to get a lot done this turn because I don't think there's anybody within 16-inch range. Um, so if you, we are, I, I did a video, I think it was on Friday, where I talked about using some stats for the Borrow Queen. And I was thinking about a different scenario at that time. Any short story is that I'm using the stats for the Hessian which are part of this scenario. So if you get scenario number 34, uh, it actually gives you the stats for the Hessian, and it is an epic level character that was designed to be used with this scenario. You could fit another epic character in here, but I just decided since, since it already included an epic character, I would use what's, what's printed for this scenario. So the Hessian uh, is just huge. In this case, the Borrow Queen has just all kinds of destructive capabilities. She is actually a character destroying machine. Yeah, she will, she is. if she gets you, you, you are pretty much doomed. Um, she has the death touch ability. She attacks with 5d12. She has 5d12 in might, 3d8 uh, finesse, 3d10 in cunning. She has Death Touch, she's reanimated, she is savage, she has moxie, she is untouchable, she is rugged, flying, inhuman, big, fierce, mighty, uh, and special, which means that she is horrific, four, uh, and uh, she has experience, four, and she has manifestation, which is the reason that even if you kill her, she, she just pops, comes back the next turn, so, whew, yeah, yeah. So if she has range, and we are just using her uh, non-player character rules for this scenario, so it tells you how to play her in the scenario. Mm -hmm. You can, if you if you want to, play her differently, but it, it tells you how to play her. She has programming, so uh, she will rush the nearest enemy. Uh, if there is no enemy within 16 inches, then she will simply move six inches towards the nearest enemy. Is that correct? Or I thought it was the center of the table. Move six inches towards the center of the table? Okay. You're right. You're right. All right. Well, let's see if she's got 16 inches to Hilda. She does not, so she will simply move. We're going to say this uh, block here is okay. right about there. Does that look close to the center? Looks close enough to me. Okay. We'll call that the center of the table. Uh, so she'll move six inches towards the center of the table. And that will end her activation. There. All right. So, Maeve the Borrow Queen howls! Ow. She sees the fires burning around her area. She is not 
happy about it. Now, I think one of the fires goes out. Is that right? That is correct. Is it at the end of each turn? It's I guess it really doesn't turn. matter when. Yes, it is the end of the at turn. At the end of each turn, one random. Uh, so, again, the lighting of the eight uh, fires is part of the ritual to, to stop uh, the Borrow Queen. Uh, but that's what kind of helps to uh, force her to manifest while you when you want her to. But then she starts snuffing out the lights as well, the different magics around the place. Now, right, these are elven fires, though, so let's see what happens here. One random fire. We have eight scattered around the table. This is one. We're going to go around to eight there. One, two. This one goes Ooh. out. Okay. It is gone. I think we can kind of... Keep an eye on that spot. I, I guess I'll put a black spot out there to show that, to clearly show that that one is burned out. Okay. Because, because there, there is, is a, a chance. It there could is come back. a chance that it could pop back on. These elven fires could uh, could spark back up. Um, that is the turn. We're starting turn number two. This is an eight turn scenario. Eight turn scenario. Um, so the very first thing. Is that we're going to draw a yellow card. Is that right? When you activate your first character. Activate the first character. Crap. Who are you activating? Me or you? <laughs> I'm going to activate... <sighs> Bilbo? I'm going to activate Bilbo. Okay. I'm Let's... activating the Bilbo. Mr. Baggins. Mr. Bilbo. As Speck calls uh -oh. him. The ghost rides. Crap in a handbag. Move the Hessian uh, into contact with the player character that is currently farthest spec. from him. Oh, dear. Oh, spec. And that's why it is so hard to control him or the, the her because... Because you think, you, oh, I'll be in front. That'll be the I'll, meat shield. I'll get in front, but no. Then Back you, of the bus. you get a clever Crap. idea and somebody comes along and goes, hey, I know, I'll destroy that. So, oh dear, oh gosh, <laughs> this is gonna be. Turn your heads, kids. This is gonna. So this is gonna Bill, be bad. yeah, Spec is gonna disappear pretty this quickly. This is gonna be bad. Um, so that was Bilbo's activation. Yep. Uh, so the next thing that happens is he'll just continue on. the The idea that he can help at this point is pretty much. Null and void. Absolutely. So all he can do is try to move on. Do I do that one or do I do it? I think I have to go further. I would, yeah, I would go further since she, Baleen's already there. You're wasting, yeah. Sure. And I'm in dark. Yep. Oh, does that mean you get a card? No. Okay. What it does mean is that if I run, I get a parallel. Oh, that's right. That's right. Are you enchanted or? Fudge Pucky. She's right there. I know. She's right there. I'm gonna run. She's I'm gonna you. run. So She's I'll get a you. I'll get a peril. Okay. The peril is a move along, so that's a free pass. So he will get awesome. his twelve inch run and he's gonna run all the way to that. Um he's actually gonna run past it a little bit and get all the way over there. Okay. All right. Oh. I have to be careful, though, if I don't have... Oh, yeah, I do have a stand firm. Okay. All right. Um, crap. So when I activate poor little Speck, he's going to get... He gets a solo card. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on. I didn't say I was going to activate him. I said when I activate him. And I was just letting you know he gets a solo Relax, card. Relax, lady. <laughs> Don't be so nervous. Why are you nervous? You jumpy as a cat. <laughs> um, <sighs> there's no way that I Should can... Should I play taps in the background? Yeah, yeah. Spec is about to get just destroyed right there. So I guess I'm... I'm I don't think there's a reason not... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Valene could save Spec. How? She's got Abscutum up. 
She's got abscutum up. Mm -hmm. So what abscutum does is when an enemy contacts or activates in contact with you, they must discard one fortune card or move one inch away at a random direction. So she could move into contact with him and force him to move away. I keep saying him. It's, it's supposed to be the borrow queen. If I, but it's going to move him an inch in a random direction. And then he's going to have both of them. I don't think you... Uh, uh, uh. All right. All right. Is it is now the time to just go ahead and lose spec? I don't think there's a way around it. So I'm going to just go ahead and activate spec. Gets a solo card. Solo card. Make it count. Uh, this character gains a plus one. Oh, that's a that's a that's an attached card. This character gains a plus one bonus to brawl, shoot, oh, or dodge, he can dodge until it is used. <laughs> okay. Ah, so the chances of, of Spec surviving this is, is just like so incredibly low. So Spec has to activate in contact. Yeah. When you activate in contact with an enemy character, a fight starts automatically. That's not optional. You don't have to spend an action point to attack or something goofy like that. When you're standing next to an enemy and you right. activate, a fight is starting. So... Are we going to throw in his make it count? Yeah, we'll throw in his make it What is that? Did I get him four? <laughs> I get him four. Okay. He's got four. The Against what? 5D12. Okay. We can do that. 5D12 coming from Easy. Maeve. Maeve the Borrow Easy. Queen is throwing 5D12 with her death touch, her icy touch. Her, her <sighs> robes are going to get in the way. The yellow counts as his solo card. Excuse me. Yes, Bilbo got a uh, uh, solo. Okay, yeah. Charlie is correct, Jim. The solo, the yellow card counts as his solo card. Uh, so, here is the uh, attack upon poor little specification. One. Now, if any of these dice are over a six, and two of them are, there's absolutely no reason for spec to roll, and spec is down. Boom. Just like that. Because death touch says, um, uh, don't roll recover health checks. Yeah. If you take one or more hits from the uh, Maeve Borrow Queen, then you're automatically injured. You do not get to roll a health check. So, uh, he would not have been able to dodge the eight or the 12. That means he suffered a hit. The Borrow Blade sinks into his flesh and speck immediately falls to the ground, frozen in fear. Ah! I'll take the make it count. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, you got Valene and Hilly. Valene and Hilly. Hilly. So I should have rolled a, I should have rolled a horror check. Oh, the yeah. thing causes <laughs> horror too. Well, he already. <laughs> I remember that when I looked over and saw the horror deck. Yeah. Oh. Man, it could have helped him too. This oh, is well. going to be a party wipe. Party wipe. Whole party going to get wiped out. Um, so that was one, two, third character. Yeah. <laughs> Who's it going to be? I'll do, uh, I'll do Hilly. All right. Get that Hilly solo is card out. Activate. Here's her solo card. All clear, this character ignores all perils, including perilous areas and bursts this turn. Hmm, okay. Fantastic. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, What's she doing? She's running 12 inches away. All right. She's running 12 inches away and getting way over here. We're going to, we've got to, we've got to talk to the, to the living corpses. Uh, now I'm going to activate Vileen. She should have rolled a horror check. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and do the horror check for, uh, Hilda. Okay, she failed a horror check. She gets a green card. So she was 12 inches back this frozen. way. Frozen. Uh, you may discard one fortune card. Meter after this horror card takes effect each time you activate. Let's see. If then you your do activation not, then your activation immediately ends. Pitess. You're going to... Discard your stand firm. 
back her up. I'm gonna have to. I either have to stay right there. Yes. <sighs> I either have to stay there or I have to lose my stand firm. Really? You may discard one fortune card immediately after this horror card takes effect, and each time you activate this character, if you do not discard, then your activation immediately ends. The terrible thing is, is that I could possibly eliminate her from the game, because until I make that recovery check, I'm going to have to back her up. All clear. So she'll hold on. Oh, so I could discard that. I could discard my all clear. I'm not going to do either one. I'm just going to back her up 12 inches. Piss. Okay. Where was she? Right about here, I guess. I think so, yeah. All right, she is frozen. Damn it. <sighs> frozen in fear. Fear of the Borrow Witch. Now, Valene will activate. She gets a horror? She gets a horror check. She does not get a uh, solo card. She passes a horror check, and then she will... She's going to go talk? She's got to have scoot him so he can't. Scoot him up. Okay, I'm going to move over to him. I'm going to move to the far side of that corpse, though. I want to be over here. Okay. And then I will attempt that plot point. So okay. here is her peril. Remember that there's always a peril involved in a plot point. So the first thing is roll two with cunning or finesse. And she has two dice in cunning. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Mm, damn it. What? She's got that Santa Pyrrhus. She could shake that. She could. She's got Santa Pyrrhus spell. So she could. She could try to remove that frozen off of Hilda. Do I remove the frozen off of Hilda or do I do the plot point? Well, you gotta start doing some plot points, pal. You're... I got plenty of time. You're, you're always in a hurry. You still have to go all the way across. You're well, going to be she's, losing life. She's not going to make it anyway. You're already down spec. You're going to have Bilbo go all the way around. Uh, yes. What if Hilda doesn't shake it off? Then I'm going to lose Hilda for a whole nother turn. Okay. All right. I'm doing the plot point. Was okay. this my plot point? Yes. Oh, okay. See what's cunning or got it. Okay, got past the uh, peril. Nope, other side. Then the plot point is one with miter finesse. She has three die eight. Got it. Got it. All right, so that plot point is completed. Is there any special rule in this in this scenario about the plot points? Do you remember? Oh. Do we just draw a plot point as normal, or do they do things? Do the plot points have special things? No. Okay. They just remain on the table. Okay. But you draw, draw a random, random reward. reward. If you're the first character yeah. to complete it. Okay. All right. So that one is completed. Uh, we'll get a random reward card. One, two, three, four, five. Shuffle up. I'll draw this one. Uh, plus one shooter finesse. And that is Valene. Yep. All clear is Hilly and stand firm is Bilbo. Okay. Now the uh, Borrow Queen. The Borrow Queen is going to activate. It does have a target. She does have a target within uh, 16 inches. So she will immediately rush at Valene. She's going to try and then be bounced back. Yeah. Two inches? Rushing an enemy also forces a horror check. So 
Valene will have to roll another horror check because now she is coming face to face oh, with D8, it's a uh, pip. And Ugh. this time she failed. Determined. The duration of this effect, the character may reroll one recovery check per turn. Okay. And that is Valene. Very cool. All right. And then she All gets right. bounced back. Right. Yep. And now it's going to bounce. Um, what Abscutum does is when an enemy moves into contact with you, the enemy may discard a card or they may move uh, one inch in a random direction. It's I think it's actually their choice. They could decide to discard mm -hmm. or not to discard. But in this case... Because no I'm cards. playing this solo, yeah. the uh, you know it's a lot harder to discard cards. In fact, it's impossible at this moment for the uh, for the specter for the the borrow queen to discard. So she's simply going to move back an inch. That makes Valene a really good uh, foil for the borrow queen. But we know we can't get too uh, happy about that. So the borrow queen just moves back an inch off this one. All right. All right. Um, okay, where are we at now? So yeah, that was the end of the turn. Queen. Oh my gosh. Pulling a bullet. So we've got one plot point complete. Oh, we lose a light. Oh, we lose another light. Oh, gone you and you're remembering things. All right. Okay, how <laughs> do many do we still have? Seven? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, this is one that is eight. We'll reroll if I get a two. I was about to put the chip in there. <laughs> what number is that? <laughs> uh, one. So the light that is right nearest to Ooh. her burns out. And that's actually the yellow chip. So I'm going to take that off and replace it with a black chip. Just so I guess technically we could remove that skeleton. Uh, no yes, else is there's, do it. Yeah, no and there's no, no other. No one else is going to attempt yeah. it. Just to clear out the space a little bit. Okay. So, Valene has the skeleton, has communicated with the skeleton, and learned one of the borrow queens. I think this is Tilly putting her hand in her heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's a puppet? Yeah. Harvard, <laughs> what are you talking to? It's all that um, way. So, recovery checks. Come on, come <laughs> on, come on. Let's make a recovery check. Does Hilly have any extra stuff? Oh, Hilly has nothing. I have nothing. Crafty sword, armored. Okay. All right. Gotta shake off that frozen, otherwise she's just done. Okay, she keeps her frozen. This is for uh, uh, spec. We gotta get spec up. Come on, spec. Don't don't desert Mr. Bilbo. Yay! Speck is back in the fight. Yay, Speck. Good on you, Speck. You know, everybody that I can keep on the table is important. Everybody yeah, that I absolutely. can keep on the table is is huge. So, um Horror is coming into effect. The solo rules are working. Now, I, I almost didn't want to play this scenario because I didn't have a second league on the table. Yep. And I know some of you, you know, I want to do that as well, where we have two competing full leagues on the table. So we're going to try and do a solo game every uh, month. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do at least one solo game every month that we that we actually show you guys that we that we do live. So uh, I'll try to make a point next month to make sure it's more like a traditional, you know, not just against the scenario sort of idea. But there are tons of scenarios like this. Yeah. And this scenario specifically, if it's, if it's designed for this, then it will say specifically, you do not need a bot league yeah. to play against. Yeah. You are simply playing against the scenario. Yeah. So those scenarios which would include all of the scenario of the month for 2021. Yes, yes. Those were all designed simply to play against the scenario, and you don't actually need another league on the yes. table. 
We're starting turn number three. This is an eight turn scenario. We're going to do the drawing for the dangles win, baby. At the end of turn four. At the end of turn four, she says. At the end of turn four. We're starting turn number three. Who are you going to activate? Who gets the yellow card? Yes. What is it with you and urination today? My goodness. I think I'm going to have to... I guess I'm going to go with... Uh... Is it going to be me or you? I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that Frozen character. I'm going to activate her first. All right. No, that's dumb, isn't it? That's dumb. I don't, what I don't, could go wrong? I don't want to do that. <laughs> what could go wrong? All right, I'll do my frozen character. <laughs> Draw a card. You have the cards, baby. What? You have the solo. Oh, sorry. It's a yellow. yellow. Ghost rides. I'm. I apologize. Mm, piss. That's farthest Bilbo. away. It's Bilbo. <gasps> oh, damn it. Oh. Manifests right in front of Bilbo. And and by the way, just just remember this also. Um it it does it is not it it transports there. Even if it was over sixteen inches, which is its fly distance, if it did have it had to move twenty four inches to get there or whatever it is, it goes to care. the furthest character away. She yeah. She this is her area and she just manifests sometimes just wherever she wants to. Oh, <sighs> piss. I, I really am sorry. Why did you do that? Don't let me draw them. I mean, you just keep drawing the same one over and over. You know I have a habit of that. It, it calls to me. Move the camera over so we can, we can see Bilbo get cut down. It's not happening. Close up and in, in technical. It's not happening. Um, so this is the activation that's going on right now, sweetheart. It's still oh, that's right. uh, Hilly. Um, so oh, Hilly is going to just that... sit there and do nothing. All clear. She does have an all clear. I'll hold on to it. I I don't know a good reason to move her. All right, Hoog. Gosh, we could lose Bilbo it's here. It's going terrible, Oog. It's going terrible. <laughs> it's I'm gonna going... just I'm gonna end Hilda's activation. Does he need to do a horror check right there? I'm sorry. Um yeah no. Because it doesn't count as rushing. Okay. He'll he'll do one when he activates, when Bilbo activates in contact with it. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't um, we didn't miss. One. I guess that's what I'm gonna do next. I'll go ahead and activate Bilbo. Ah, oh, this is bad. Okay, so uh, I'll take my solo card. Yep, solo. Missing clue. Uh, so roll for the challenge below. Four die ten. Oh, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, four die ten. Okay, passed it. Uh, Care gains plus one bonus when rolling for a plot point. Okay, so that's his. Okay. All right, and now we're going to have to resolve that fight. Oh, my God. We dodged. Oh, 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 horror check. Ooh. Did I roll my horror check yet? Not yet. Okay, horror check. Horror me, baby. One. <gasps> Give me a green card. Green card is steadfast. Steadfast. Immediately remove all other horror cards from this character when steadfast takes effect. For the duration of this effect, the character passes all horror checks immediately. So. Well, that's nice. He is not. Too bad it's not remove it from every character. Yeah. We should rewrite that. Pencil that in. No. Um, and that means it's time for the fight. Uh, and she is throwing massive dice at him. Five, Five D, 12. Whoo. Bilbo dodging? What's he got? Yeah, the borrow queen is coming at him. Five D, 12 coming from, um, 
the borrow queen, and yeah, he's gonna have to try to dodge it. What's yeah, you four him? four die ten. Okay, you got that. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's no way he's gonna be able to dodge that. You can dodge it. Just no way. So here is her attack upon him. Yep, see that 12 will stop it. We've got two sixes, and that means he's automatically going to be injured. See, right there, there's absolutely no reason to even roll. And because her death blade touch sinks automatically in. injures him. Blade automatically sinks in and injures him. And you don't get injured more than right. once, so there's no reason. No reason to even roll any further. Is she savage? She is savage. So shall, now she will do it again. So savage means that after she attacks, she gets to do it again. She Even if it's his activation? Yeah. Okay. Once per turn. After you resolve a fight, you get to start the okay. fight again. Right. So that's exactly sure. what happens there. So uh, he will try to dodge again. She's still rolling 5d12 because she's not affected. Normally, I would remind you here that she would lose a dice for multiple combats. So if multiple fights happen in the same activation, they are still multiple fights. Uh, so she will get uh, 5d12. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She can't, he can't stop that 10. So he's automatically, oh, dang, going, to it's hurt. Oh, he's automatically man. going to be injured again. And he Ooh. is almost dead. And she hasn't even activated on her And turn she yet. has not <laughs> activated. What's <laughs> uh, stand firm? Uh, stand firm is that he gets uh, to roll a bigger dice for his recovery check. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Bilbo is going to get taken out by the Barrow's Blade here. Oh. <sighs> oh, dear. Oh, man. <laughs> Whose turn is it next? <laughs> Who wants to die next? Um, Valene? Valene. Is she hauling? Did she activate or not? No. No? Okay. It was Hilly. I think it's just been Hilly and oh, Bilbo. Oh, my God. There's no way she's close enough to get him. Do I run towards him or do I run away? Run away. There's no light over here. If I run, I'm going to be... Um, oh. There's no lights. I see. I've got to run to try and get near a plot point. Yep. I don't know that being the furthest character away is a good idea for this scenario. <laughs> I'm sorry. The way you like to run. I'm so... It's not rolling, it's drawing, and you know I can't help that. All right, well, she's going to try to... Spec. They get a solo card, whoever you go with. Can't forget that. Okay. I don't hmm. know if that helps, but... It could, it could. I'm going to have to send Valene towards the Spectre. All right, I'm going to activate Valene. Okay, and her solo card is... Shortcut. Uh, challenge. So she's going to roll for that challenge at the bottom of that card. Two, Two finesse, finesse or cunning. cunning. She's got four die eight in cunning. She's going to try and take a shortcut here. No. Much Denada. Okay. And if you fail... Uh, take two hits. Do what? Fail, take two hits. Take two hits. So she's going to roll for her health check. Two die eight. Got and it. She passed it. Okay. So, um, roll for the challenge below. Fail, take two hits. Doesn't say that's a peril, so I don't think that ended her activation. Uh, so she will continue her activation. Uh, now if I run, I'm going to get a damn, another damn peril. Mm -hmm. I've got to. I've got to run. Uh, so here is her peril for running. Two 
with might or fidesh. Yes, the only three die eight and might. So here it is. Got it. All right, so she can get her run She's hauling. in. Gotta try and run. Don't worry, Mr. Bilbo. Oh, and she's gonna take a horror check when she gets that close to Bilbo. I'm sorry, that close to the to the Borrow Queen. And she maybe Bilbo, that. depending on what kind of carnage is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna lose Bilbo at the end of this turn. This is so bad. This attaches to it, right? Is it? Mm. No. No. That no, she it, failed that hers. Yeah. Oh, this is our stack of discard solo. Oh, okay. Well, I don't like that. I want my discard from the same pile over here. Well, you insist on putting it over there. Okay. Um, Speck is last. And Speck does not have a... And he's in the dark. He is in the dark, but he that doesn't... just means it's a difficult area. It doesn't mean he has to take a peril unless right. he chooses to run. Right now... I guess I'm gonna move him six inches towards. I'm not gonna try and run. Yeah, good, good choice. I'm gonna move six inches. I guess off this away. Good, good idea. All right. Oh my god. Now the uh, specter act, the uh, borrow queen activates and finishes off Bilbo. Aww. This is so bad. Bilbo is done Bilbo for. Bilbo No, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Um, it's fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> 5D12? Yep, 5D12. Um, fuck. Whoa. Uh, he's going to try to dodge again. We'll have some sixes. There's just no way. You can't stop this thing. It's just unbeatable. Okay, I won't be able to stop oh, that eight. Oh, man, there's that, always one. And that means Bilbo is down. Okay. Go Move down that. easy, Bilbo. That's what I heard. <laughs> easy. That's what they call it around the old neighborhood. Ah! All right. Recovery checks. That was her activation. Recovery checks. So he will roll a D8. For his recovery. See, I didn't I didn't use the ring, which I thought about using at the end of that turn, at the end of his activation, and then I got distracted by Bessie talking about something else. It got me distracted. I'm blaming her now. <laughs> I wanted to use the ring and go into hiding. Um which is why I held on to some of the uh, uh, attached cards. Don't blame me for your inability. To remember from one minute to the next? Yeah. Uh, so here is for Bilbo. If I get a four or better, Bilbo gets up. Boys and girls, if I haven't already, please take a moment right now and click the uh, uh, like button for us. If you're not a subscriber, you ought to be. Get subscribed to our little channel. Bilbo? is up and he will scoot away ever so slightly and move <laughs> away move away from the scary monster Arr. with his blood trail Arr. and possible entrails remember when you uh recover that just gets you back to a d6 so it doesn't remove all of your injuries it only removes so one that of loses them. your stand firm correct no no, it doesn't. Oh, cool. Um, so it says, um, just so everybody can see it, um, it says attach it to the end of turn. Uh, if it, some of them will say attach until used or something like that, but this is just until attached, end of scenario. Until end of scenario. Yep. So very cool. Keeps that. He won't actually just keep it because something will happen and and cause it to um, disappear. Probably. You get to roll for Hilly. Oh, poor Hilly. And she's been deserted by Bailey, yeah, the character has. that could have saved her. Yeah, she has. <sighs> she's frozen. God dang it. Poor <sighs> Oh, mm. uh, we get a light that goes out. 
Oh, good. Good, good, good. Well, thank you. We got a lot. Um, I think I got six lights now. We got six lights. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one that's six. Five. five. Is this one way over here? So I'll put a black dot down to remember that that one's out. Let's see. What else? I don't think there's anything else. Go All right, on. now we're going to go into our uh, yellow card. Just give me a moment here, lady. I'm um, trying to shuffle so I don't draw the same one again. I'm trying to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah, she always puts the same one on top. I know I just draw the same card every time. You know there's six cards there. I just draw the same. Um, who am I going to activate? Oh, draw uh Thank you. Can I do Hilly again? I would do Hilly. I don't think there's anything good to be had in there. I'm going to do... I'll do Hilly again. Okay. I'll Wait. activate her first. Stay in the light. Okay. So areas that are not in the light are perilous areas. So Hilly will now have to take a peril. So her peril is uh, two with might, finesse, or cunning. She has three die eight in cunning. She got the two she needed, so she passed it. Oh, she's on. Sorry, that was just a peril. That was not the card. That was, that was not the on guard card. It was just using the peril on it. Okay. So now she could continue her activation. You dropping a card? And I will simply. Do nothing? Do nothing. Yeah. She's just going to stand there. Uh, frozen in fear. Let's scoot this. Who are you going to activate next? Where do you want me to scoot it? Um, spec? No. I gotta do something over here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do Valene next. Okay. So she gets a solo card. Oh. Um, she gets a horror. Mm hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Horror first? Solo mm -hmm. first? Solo would come first. Okay. So solo comes first. Okay, roll for the challenge below. Uh, two with Miter Finesse, and she has three, three die eight in Might. Okay, Got it. she passed it. It's going to be another attach card. Oh, no, it's not. It's not an attached card. It says uh, the scenario is extended by plus one turn. Okay, I'm going to set that over there. All right. So now it's a nine turn scenario. And okay. she can continue her activation. Um, Horror. Horror, yeah. Okay. Hysteria. So, she's got a minus one to her shoot, minus one to her brawl, minus one to her dodge, and she cannot run. She has hysteria. This is her pile. Yeah. The all clear is it's hilly, but hilly. everything else is. Okay. Thank you for trying to help me remember that. All right, so now the trick here is what do I do with... Are you going to... Throw um, a healing on Bill That's Bill. what I've been thinking about. Yeah, I'm trying, trying to decide that. Yeah. Get him back up. Yeah. Because that's that's bad. Yeah. 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 So what Valene is going to do is she's going to move to within an inch of the... Uh, of the Borrow Queen of Maeve here. She's going to move up to her, calling her out. Which of the Borrows? She, she's a two-pack-a-day smoker. Which you know of that, the Borrows? You know, that's not usually how elvish 
<laughs> See, I said she's a two-pack-a-day smoker. When you're a two-pack-a-day smoker, that's what the elvish yeah, ladies sound like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Are you, what? You don't know that? Come on. It's written in Tolkien's lore. Um, oh, sure. And now she's going to try to cast Santa Puris. All right. And for that, she rolls her cunning. Four die eight. Are you ready? No. Okay. Four die eight. Here we go. So the number of successes Two. is the number of immediate recovery checks that Bilbo gets to roll. So he's going to roll two recovery checks. And that's possible to actually remove, and it's important to remember here, that he can actually shake off both of his injuries here. And he's rolling D D eights for because, his recovery yeah. checks. And he did indeed shake both of his recovery checks off. I'm sorry, both of his injuries off. So he is back up. So the Fantastic. horrible injury that he suffered at the hands of the borrow witch are removed by Valene. Two pack a day calls, Valene. Yeah. That's what they call her around the old neighborhood. Two pack a day Valene. I gotta activate somebody. Have I so, drawn three cards yet? One, two. I did. You did. So Bilbo does not draw, Bilbo. but he does have a horror. No, check. no. Uh, steadfast means he doesn't have. He to. He doesn't have to roll a horror check. All right. So he's gonna move into contact with the um, plot point. The plot point, and then he's going to attempt attempt it. Yep. Yeah. He's talking to the head on the stick. He's having a riddle contest with this, this skull here on the stick. Not the one on the ground, or not the one with the hair. It's that other one there. It's the smart skull. And uh, oh, remember, you whenever you do... Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that. So for his peril, he's going to have to roll one with... Cunning or mine. Cunning. cunning is three die eight. You got tens in your hand. What'd you say? You have tens. Okay. Okay. Because one, that's what he's rolling. Okay. okay. Got he him. got the two success or one success that he needed, and now he goes to the plot point three. Gosh. Ooh. Finesse Darn. might finesse or cunning. Got anything to add? Finesse. Okay. Four die eight. All right. Four die eight. Need two of these. Got it. Sorry, need three of these. One. Got one. Wow. Put it put a blue chip. You, you can do a long action. Uh, that stinks. Dang it. Gosh. Yay, Bilbo. Hmm. Uh Borrow Queen gets to Borrow Queen. Borrow Queen rushes uh, uh, Baleen. Two pack a day, Baleen. She does not have a card to discard, nope. so she will have to bounce. Oh, hopefully we get a good bounce. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to let you distract me again. You keep doing this to me. You keep making me jump oh, to I'm something sorry. when you shouldn't be doing that. I have to decide at the end of Bilbo's activation whether or not I want to put him into hiding. I, I don't think I do, because we know what Valene's going to do right now. And even if we got right the, the whatever it is, the one that trying. he goes to the furthest one. So I don't think hiding right now is actually going to matter. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that could happen that would make it matter. Right? Probably not. Okay. All right. We'll continue on. Um, the Borrow Queen will rush Valene. Does Valene have to do a horror? Uh, or is she good? Yeah. We'll do the horror check. Okay, she failed it. Takes the green card. Ooh. Ugh. 
name. Um, so she is now frozen. Um, wow. Wow, she is in all kinds of trouble here. What are you doing? Nothing. What is it? It's all bad brawn to frozen. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, she gets to bounce. The yeah, bounce. she's going to have to bounce. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, she'll end up over here. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, recoveries. Recoveries. Got two frozens. Got to get rid of. Got tons of, of um, got tons of recovery checks. Okay, so we're going to start with the frozen on Hilly. Okay. See if she could shake that one off. Hilly! Hilly finally shakes off her frozen. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, I love the way that ooh, works. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so now, um, I thought she's got the, to, for that, okay, so that's, that's Baleen's stack. So, it's important to remember that you don't roll for each effect, right? If you're injured, then you're going to roll for an injury, but if you have a horror effect, you also get to roll for a horror recovery. In fact, if you have a spell on you, you also get to roll for spell recovery. So there are three different types of recovery checks. All of them are recovery checks. So there's an injury recovery, a spell recovery, and a horror recovery. So she's going to get to roll for a horror recovery, and then if she passes it, which she did, she gets to pick one of the horror effects that are on her and she can remove one of the effects. So when we look at this, I think we have to get rid of the frozen. I don't think we? so too. We have to get rid of that frozen. So we're going to remove the frozen, but that means she has to hold on to that hysteria. Yeah. For but another turn, at least. Frozen's way too. Yeah, frozen is bad. Bad, 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 bad. All right. Uh, are any other recovery checks? I to think roll that's for? it. So we're gonna pull a bullet, and we're starting a new turn, pal. So who gets the yellow card? Who are we activating first? Boy, I don't know. Who do you think? Hilly. Hilly. Is she like the sacrificial lamb? Is that what she well, is? Well, I feel like Hilly could probably handle <laughs> better than Spec. I, well, it doesn't really matter. Oh, no, we, we lose a, we lose a, a, a light. A light, okay. All right, how many lives do I have still? Five now? Yeah. Uh, this is one that's five, or this is one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Nine, ten over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that one's gone. Man, you know there's actually the flicker of hope in there. It would be nice if you would draw that once in a while. Would be. Um, could be. Oh, I need to put a black dot out there. Yeah, but that's... Would be, could be, but it's not happening. It's in this right there. Okay. Um, sweetheart, what do you think? What's, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll activate, uh, Hilly. So you draw, you draw what you need to draw. Doom and gloom, the character nearest to the Hessian must roll a horror check immediately in addition to the light nearest to the target character switches off if it's on. It would be Bilbo, uh -huh. but he gives steadfast, so he doesn't actually have to roll the horror okay. check. All right. So, but the, the light, light does off. go off. Okay. Okay. So, All right. it's not the best, uh, but not the worst. And then Hilly can continue her activation. Yep. Man, I don't know. So that plot point is still over there. And she's in the dark. This plot point is gone. Yes. And that one, did I draw a reward card for Bobo? Oh, no. Plus one brawl or might. Okay. Was that the oh that was the end of turn four? Oh, was that was the end of turn four? Yeah. We pulled 
three bullets. That was the end of turn four. Draw a name. Or three names. We're going to do the drawing now, boys and girls. Thank this you, is Jim. For the, this is for the... Oh, Jim. Oh, the stute. So this is for these He's really very cool... Astute. <laughs> this is for these really cool uh, dangles. Put it up on the... So pretty, pretty good size. I think it's about two inches or so long. Uh, you know, you can hang these, uh, you, what, what were you saying? Put them on a collar, put them on your neighbor's cat, hang it from your rear view Christmas mirror, tree. Christmas tree ornament, a necklace, wear this around your neck when you go to the bar. Uh, everybody knows you're super cool then. That'll get the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you see my Paul Valley pendant? Hey, uh, I, <coughs> I play Paul Valley. Yeah. <laughs> hey, girl. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, Paul Valley. Really? Tell me more. <laughs> I wow, to... that school looks so dangerous. <laughs> uh, so we're going to draw three names and get three winners. Three winners. Hey, Bessie, how do they claim their prizes? You need to email... Or Facebook message me your physical mailing address. Because I am mighty in mind, but not enough. Okay, so three names. Name number one. Oh, no. William schmidt Martin. William schmidt Martin is winner number one. Remember to claim your prize if you want it. Okay, name number two. Thank you guys so much for being part of the Pulp Alley community. Tolemicus! Tolemicus from the Pennsylvania Way. Send me your address. Tolemicus from the Pennsylvania Way. Third name. Third and final name goes to... Paul's Paint Shed. Paul's Paint Shed! Or, as it says, Paul's Paint Shed. <laughs> mm, you know. <laughs> it's taken a turn. How awesome. So send us your physical mailing address. Physical mailing so address. So we can send you the lovely dangles. To the Pulp Alley email or the Pulp Alley Facebook messenger. Where were we, babe? What were we doing? Did we draw a yellow card? Yes, that was the light. And okay, and the that. horror check. Yes. Okay, all right. So now we get to moving. She's and in that, the was, dark. that was that was that was Hilda. Were hilly, so okay. so I either run with her. God dang it! She gotta start moving. She has <sighs> done nothing. If I try to run, it's gonna be perilous. Oh, she's got the all clear. She's got all clear. You've been holding on to it this whole time. Cause she couldn't have moved. But I could have used it for something. To else. move. Um, but, come on now. Now's the time to do it. All right, I'm gonna take my all clear. So I'm gonna ignore the perils and I'm gonna run her 12 inches towards the ne the next plot point. Yay, Hilly. 12 inch run. Moving and a grooving. Wow, look at that, babe. She is within striking range of that that skeleton that's laying on the ground over there. She's Yay. gonna be on him in no time flat. Okay. Uh. So Did, next, so that counted her her solo card. Yes. Okay. Um. So you got Spec, next Valine. character that I'm gonna activate is going to be Spec. I guess. Do I want to do Spec next? Yeah. It's gonna be Spec. Gonna be spec. Uh, solo card. Solo card is. For and he's spec. out of range for a horror, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, watchful eye. Okay. If character fails, cannot move during this activation. So he's got to roll for the challenge below. I need to roll two successes with cunning or might. He can do neither of those, so he, he will automatically six? fail. No, it's not a terrible. Oh. Uh, and he cannot move until the end of this activation. Sorry. Cannot move during this activation. It's not an attach. It just means that he... I'm going to... So I don't need to do anything. So it just I, ends I, I can, his activation. Yeah, basically ends his activation okay. right there. 
It's not a peril. It's not an attach. Okay. Anything like that. So uh, that's gone. So the next. Um, <sighs> what? Bilbo did not finish his plot point. I just remembered. So that skull oh, should be yeah. back. Yeah. Oh. And he oh, does not oh, get oh, his. Oh. Yeah. Word card. Yeah. 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 Which one was it? This one. Okay. Thank you. So that was the challenge right there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me honest. You cheat once in a while. I let you cheat for a little while. No. <laughs> You're welcome. Um. Okay. Well. I guess I'm a. Man, I wanted to get Bilbo out of there. I guess I'm going to activate Bilbo next. Okay, I'll activate Bilbo next. He will not roll for a horror card. Um, he will get a solo card, though. Surprise twist. This guy is, oh my god. Ah! This side's activation ends immediately. Switching to activating, switch to activating the opposite opposing characters if able. Return to activating this side after all the opposing characters have activated. Mm. Wow. And that was Bilbo. Yeah. Um. I have to go potty. Okay, babe. Well. That's going to automatically end his activation. Which does stink. It does stink. Um, not just because of the beans. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put him into hiding. He's going to go ahead and use the fade ability there. Uh, at the end of his activation, if he's not in hiding, it's not an action. It is just happens at the end of his activation. So when his activation ends, he can discard a card to go into hiding. It may not work against the Borrow Queen, but he's desperate and he's trying to find a way out. So he's going to slip on the ring and try to disappear here. That's still going to cost him his entire activation, though. Wow, that really stinks. Couldn't have, couldn't have happened at a worse time. Um, but I'm going to have to discard a card to do it. And I guess... Wow. I guess I'll use this missing clue, which I should have used already. Okay, um, so now Bilbo is going to go into hiding. I'm using my black counters for something else, so I guess maybe if I just stick the black counter under his feet, help me remember that. So his activation ends right there with him trying to hide from the Borrow Queen. Arr! Um... That's why I should have activated Baleen first. But I was thinking if I activated Bilbo first and he failed to get the plot point, then Baleen would still be there and she could run over there and get it. I should have activated Baleen first, though. That's really what I should have done there. That was a mistake on my part, I think, tactically. As it stands, now Baleen will activate and now she will have to roll a horror check. Oh, no, no, no. Stop. Stop everything. Um... The surprise twist flips it, and uh, the Borrow Queen is the one that activates. So the Borrow Queen now activates, and she will get an opportunity to spot Bilbo. So she smells him. Ah, little one. You think you can hide from me? So, Bilbo, uh, uh, Borrow Queen gets a spotting check here. She has an amazing uh, cutting of three die ten, so she's rolling three die ten to try and spot Bilbo. 
She's going to roll three die ten. Does she see him despite the ring? She got one success. And that means Bilbo is going to have to roll at least one success to avoid her. And he does. Uh, Bilbo is covert. And that means that the Borrow Queen had to roll more successes than he did. He got two successes. She did not spot him. As she turns towards him, she's looking. She can't see him, but she does, however, see Valene. And she will rush Valene, and then she will bounce. A D8, or uh, one, um, so she'll go basically to the other side of Valene like that, bouncing off of her. Now, it's certainly possible, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Was that the third character to activate? I was about to say that it's certainly possible that the... Uh, I need to go back and, and remember whether or not that was the third character. The first character was Hilda. The second character was Bilbo. So, yes. Uh, the third character to activate was actually the uh, Spectre. And there we go. There we go. Uh, character gains a plus one bonus to brawl, shoot, or dodge. And look at that, what it says on there. Attach. So when she moves into contact with Valene, she can choose to discard this card instead of backing away. And the reason she got to do that is because all of that was because of that damn surprise twist that popped up. And that made her the third character to activate, right? Am I right? The first one was Hilda. The second one was Bilbo. So the third character would have been, right? Yeah, we didn't sure. activate Spec yet already. No? No, I thought we did. We did activate Spec? What was his solo card? He. It was a two by three uh, or two or three. And You're right. He couldn't You're do right. It. You're right. I have to take all that back. She was not the third character. Okay. So everything happened the way it happened. She get she gets bounced. She gets bounced. She was not the third character. She was the fourth character. One, two, three. So she would not have got a solo card. What I was trying to say was is that it's certainly possible that she could end up getting attached cards, and then that would prevent uh, Valene from bouncing her. Um. Is it Valene's turn? It is Valene's turn. So I guess Valene's got to go after the plot point. I think so. Surprise twist. So Bilbo's activation was destroyed by the surprise twist. Yep. Uh, also, I put Bilbo into hiding. I okay. wanted to let you know okay. that. I kind of thought so since there was a black underneath. And, and she got a spotting check when Bilbo activated. Uh, and she did not spot Bilbo, okay. so she was able to remain in hiding. So she's going to move over to the skull, and she will get a peril. Sorry, wrong side. One with cunning. Well, she's got four die eight in cunning. That's her sweet spot. You pipped me. Yeah. Got it. <sighs> Whew, that was close. Okay. Uh, so now uh, she needs two more successes to get that. And I thought I had forgot to do something last time. Looking at my cards. She's got Shooter Finesse, Reroll Recovery, Cannot, Shoot Brawl, has a minus one Shoot Brawl and Dodge, and Cannot Run. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, here is her uh, attempt at the plot point, and she finishes it off. Woohoo! So a girl. we had already, so the plot point is completed, and that goes. And, and this is the card that that's we That's the reward decided. card. So the re reward card is she now has plus one brawl and might. So she's got, and if I remember right, I'm pretty sure the plot points in this are no drop, so I don't think. Um, and then this goes into that stack. 
Because it was okay. a barrel. Okay. All right. Now. I think that's the end of the turn. That's the end of the turn. All of them have activated. He lost his activation. Dun, 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 dun. Everybody activated. So we burn out another light. Oh boy, we are running out of daylight, boys and girls. We are running out of, of lanterns. Um, recovery checks. No, we yeah, recovery checks, yeah. Right. Just, and and the lantern, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the only recovery check that we need to roll for right now is for uh, Bailene. Yeah. So here's her recovery check. She doesn't get a D8. Just a D6. And. Nope. Failed. She is determined. Nope. And failed again. So she remains hysteria. Hysteria is. She still is shaken by the presence of the. Uh, Dang it. Of the. Um, of the borrow queen. All right. Pulling a bullet. We are running out of time here. We're starting turn six. Ooh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Lose a lantern. Lose a lantern. Okay. I have three left. Uh-huh. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So that one goes. All right. All right. Who's going to, who are you going to go first? Speck? So it's completely dark over there. Yeah. Gonna make sp throw spec to the wind or? Yeah, I guess. Hold on, hold on, hold on, lady. Maybe. Yeah. Sp spec. All right, ready? Yep. Doom and gloom. Character nearest to the Hessian has to roll a horror check, and the light, additional light nearest the target switches off if it is on. Okay, so it's already off. But Valen rolls. Valen rolls a horror check. Oh. Failed it. Horror card. Madness. Madness. Oh my god. You must discard one fortune card when you activate the character. If you do not discard, the opponent takes control of your character. Woo, 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 woo. Okay. She now has madness. But that was not her activation. That was Speck's activation. Speck is going to move six inches, wandering off towards the center of the table. Okay. Mr. Bilbo... Where are you? Mr. Bilbo? Who's next? Hilly? Oh my god, this is having so much trouble. I'm having such trouble. Oh, you can move. Oh, that one's gone now? Yeah, because okay. Valen passed it. Okay. Okay. Mm. Man. Hilly can try that plot point. Yeah. Again. Was that Specs activation? Yes. Okay. So he got his yellow card. Yep. So now, all right. Hilly will try hers. So she'll get a solo card. Solo card is Sprint. That is an attach card. Character can attach that until they use it. So help me remember that Hilly has that okay. one. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and move her into contact with Skelton. All right. So she's going to move up over here. She's going to talk to Mr. Sleepy Skelton and see if she can riddle a clue out of him. To solve the riddle. Oh, she's she's crafty. She knows what to do. Yeah, she is. Okay, so here is the draw. She needs two successes with finesse or cunning. Well, she has the cunning. She has three die eight. Going to have to get two of these, though. So she gets past the peril. The plot point is two with cunning or might. She needs two. Yes. And she got that as well. And the plot point is complete. Woohoo! Oh good my girl. Gosh. 
We are running out of daylight, boys and girls. We are running. I'm going to take that off, take the skeleton off. And you get blue? Okay. The blue card is... Uh, instead of rolling for a recovery check, I could discard to um, pass it. Man, those discard, discard ones are very hard when you're doing solo. Yeah. I mean, I have attached cards. I have two two cards that I could discard if I wanted to. No, but it it makes it much more. So that's my second activation. You have to be very specific. Oh uh, yeah, about it. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can't willy nilly on yeah. it for sure. So who am I going to activate over here? Because when Valene activates, if I don't discard, I, I I'm going to lose her activation. Yep. No, that's not what happens. If I don't discard the specter, the borrow queen Gets takes her. control yep. and, and activates her. And that could be bad. Yikes. Could the borrow queen take down the abscutum? Uh not with what it has right now. Not with what's in the game so far. I mean if he takes control of her. Like, say, I'm going to no. take it. Okay. No. Okay. Right. No. And the reason is, is that a spellcaster can drop their own spells at the end of the turn. Very good. Okay. So, during your own activation is not when you take down one of your own spells. Very good. That occurs at the end of the turn. Well, that's nice. It's just the rule, so. <sighs> So I'm going to have to draw another solo card, aren't I? Yep. Okay. Last one. I'm going to draw, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to activate Valene. Okay. I'm going to activate Le Valene. So here is her solo card. Watch your back. So she's going to get a peril. Uh, it's the peril at the bottom of the card. So one she's with going Miter to Finesse. One with Miter Finesse. I was really hoping for an attach card. I know. There. I was thinking the same thing. So she passed it. So it's not going to be attached. Good on. But now I'm going to have to discard a attach card or the borrow queen takes control. And horror cards don't count for that, correct? You're right. Right. Too bad. Yeah. So right now I only have two cards in my possession that can get it done. Take away Sprint? I'm going to have to get rid of the Sprint. Too bad because Hilda can use that to get to the other one. I know it. I know it. But... I know. Stand, I'm going to have to get rid firm. of the sprint to avoid losing uh, Valene to the madness. Did she get a horror, too? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me think about that then. Yeah. I'll take my horror first. Okay. D6? D8. Okay. Okay. Here's her horror check. For activating next to the queen. Okay, she passed it. Okay. okay. Now she'll pitch the, the sprint. sprint. So she keeps her activation. She can't run, so she can only go six. Why can't I run? I thought one of them hit hysteria. Hysteria says she can't run. All right, so she's going to move six inches towards... Gonna move six inches this away. Okay. Is she gonna? And she's going to cast. I've got a perilous area spell. Yeah. Might as well. I mean. No. 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 I have the three spells I have are area periculos, abscutum, and Santa Puris. Can she do Santa Puris? I think on I'm gonna herself? do Santa Puris. Yeah. Sana Puris is a cunning based spell, so she's going to roll her cunning dice of four die eight. She's going to try to remove some of the effects off of herself. That's a good idea. So four she's going to get to roll four recovery checks. D8s or D6s? D6s. Oh, come on now. So, uh, I'll do it one at a time. Okay. Nope. Okay, I'm going to remove the madness. 
Yay. Madness is gone. Good, good, good. Hysteria is gone. And that was it, right? And that's it. So I don't need the remaining. And then she's done. Cool. Oh, magic. That's huge. Save me, magic. That was huge. Bilbo. Bilbo, you crazy little fellow. Now, how far can he go while hidden? He could normally only move. Uh, he's going to run. Yeah. He's, he's coming out of it. hiding. Okay. He's coming out of hiding to run. Okay. But that means he's going to have to take a peril. Whew. One with finesse. One with finesse. He's got four die ten and finesse. Okay. Okay. Got it. Passed it. So he gets to do his run, and he's going to run 12 inches towards the next plot point that he could find. And that's way over there. By the pumpkins. By the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm headed towards that black dot, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I need to kind of angle a little bit more. Okay. Okay. All right. Still not in range to get it, though. But you have... That's eight turns, and we get to add. Oh, so it's, it's nine, nine turns. turns. So it's yeah. nine turns. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Oh, man. It's not over. So what's the barrel queen? She's going to rush Valene. Okay. She does not have an attached card. So she will bounce. She will bounce. Back. Boop, boop. All right. Now... That's just how a normal NPC is handled. If you are using that as a player character, you could certainly choose to do things a little bit differently. You couldn't rush a different character, but if you really wanted to, she could fly 16 inches around over here and sit on this other plot point, right? If you were playing it yeah. super smart, that's maybe that's what you would do instead of just bouncing off that character. But non-player characters do have programmed things that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, that they, they have advantages yeah. and they have disadvantages. They're not there to outsmart you. In fact, the scenario there is for you to try and outsmart the scenario. The NPCs are not there to outsmart you. So you, what you have to do as a player is try to figure out how to beat that scenario. Uh, that ends that turn. Yep. We don't have any recovery checks. Nope. Uh, we lose a lantern. Oh, damn it. So, it's the three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's gone. Okay. And then we'll pull a bullet, but we'll put in, that's seven, eight, nine. Okay. Is that right? Okay. And now you need to decide who you are. So we're are... starting turn number seven. Yep. You got plenty of time. No rush. That's when accidents happen. I guess it's going to be Hilda, right? I would say yeah. Or Spec. It's going to be Hilda. Okay. Hilda activates. She will get... The yellow card. The yellow card is Flicker of Hope. Select one light that is currently off. Your choice. This light switches on. Wow. You select it. Gosh, at this point in the game, it's almost irrelevant, though, isn't it? The one by Bilbo? See, that one's... <laughs> we still have one on. Uh... The one between... Yeah, see, that one's not even in a light over there. Okay. Uh -huh. Why couldn't you just be drawing that every turn? That would make things so much nicer if you just drew Flicker of Hope every turn. I do the best I can. Everything doesn't have to be bad. I do it to make you happy. <laughs> you know you're happy. If I drew Flicker of Hope every time, you would not be happy. <laughs> uh, we'll do this one out here. Okay. Uh, yeah. That sounds good. All right. Okay, uh, so that was that. At least that means something bad didn't happen that time. At least that means, right? 
So you have that one hope, that one small flicker of hope, which is the name of the card. Um, Solo. So who's going next? You have Bilbo, Speck, Valine. Who just activated? Hilly. Oh, no, she still gets no, to go. She Sorry. Still gets, she still gets an activation. Um, I guess she's going to move six inches towards that skeleton. I'm not going to run because I don't want to take a peril, and that will get me within striking distance of it. So a six-inch move gets me out here. Okay. Now what? Spec? What is a spec? I'm so surprised he's still alive. Oh, he's in horror range. Damn it. Sure is. Mm. Okay. Uh, so he... He'll take the horror card first. Card effects come... Uh, card effects... Horror cards and things like that are supposed to, as uh, solo cards, are supposed to happen before uh, situational effects. So the horror card comes first. Sorry, the solo. Yeah, the solo card comes first. It says attach until end of turn. Now that's that's interesting. Uh, it's, it says no shot on it, so he can't shoot this turn. I guess he's gonna move. Six inches towards the center of the table. Get up on top of this little monument thing here. Okay. And that is attached to him. Reason that's nice to remember, it's attached. It says attach until end of turn. So if I have something that allows me to discard... That card is free game. I can make that card go away by discarding it. It doesn't require you to only discard nice things that are good for you. You can actually use that ability, and that's part of the balancing effect because discarding is a little bit harder in solo play. You also have that ability yep. right there. Yep. That's my second card, second character. I have to activate another character. Bilbo or Valene. I guess it's going to be Valene. Okay. All right. Valene activates. Let's get so a nice she'll shot get of a, her. She'll get a solo card that says, watch your step. She's She is trying to hold that that specter, that Along with Borrow cunning or Queen might. at bay right there. She has three die eight in, in might. Gets it. Whew, barely. Barely Whew. indeed. Okay, so now I have to decide what I'm going to do with her. Uh, she gets a horror. She does get a horror. Horror check. Horror checks are made on your current health level. She rolled a five. She remains unshaken. Hmm. So, I have some spells. You want to put a peril on her? Just for funsies. What I really have to decide was whether or not I'm going to run here. Oh. Do I run? I got Bilbo closing in. Hilly... Hilly's within range to do it next turn. Bilbo. Because 1d8, you place it 1d8 from the center of the table, right? Yeah. Bilbo's going to take two turns to get there. Bilbo won't get there. Because you don't Maybe. need him to get there, because you need him to maybe stay towards the middle. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's Baylene. She has to stay close. All right, this is what she's going to do. She's going to move six inches towards the center of the table. Okay. Six 
going to move six inches towards the center of the table. And then she's going to... I gotta throw something. I gotta cast something on somebody. There you go, Periculos. Son of Purus. Does anybody have any damage on them that I need to worry about? Not really, huh? No. Alright. What's on her? What's her horror that's on hers? Determined. Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah, she's going to try and throw uh, area periculos, uh, which is just parallel, creates a perilous area. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, it is an action. Place a marker up to 12 inches away. So I'm going to cast it basically centered on the, uh, the fellow. Yeah, on, on the borrow queen. Okay. So, angry um, or, or friendly spirits or sprites or something pop up all around the borrow witch to harass her a little bit, pulling on her robes. What does she have to such. roll? It's, it's a perilous area. So she will roll. No, Baleen. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Baleen, it is a, um, it's a cunning roll. So she rolls her cunning. Four die eight. Uh, she gets three successes, and that simply means that's the number of counters. That is the power of the spell. If there were things in play right now that could get rid of it, then um, that would be that would matter. Mm -hmm. But honestly, the for this version of, of the Borrow Queen, she doesn't have anything to get rid of that sort of stuff. Um, all right. So now when the Borrow Queen activates, uh, she will rush. Did we uh, do Bilbo? Do what? Yes, we did. Right. did. Did we activate Bilbo? Oh, no. No, no, no. It is. Yeah, Bilbo activates. Okay. Uh, Bilbo activates. He doesn't have to roll a horror because he's uh, steadfast. steadfast. And then he's going to move six inches towards the plot point. Okay. Whew. Okay, then the Borrow Queen. Are you sure? Did we do Bilbo? Maybe we did. I don't remember. I don't think we I don't think we did I don't do think, Bilbo. I didn't think we did. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so now the Borrow Queen activates. Uh, she'll get a random peril uh, because she's activating in a perilous area, which again would be like spirits of the water Whoa. or something. It's a big one. Going to have to roll three successes with might, finesse, or cunning. I think those friendly spirits are about to get beat into oblivion because the borrow queen's might is 5d12 mm. 5d12 so she needs to roll three successes and no. easy peasy <laughs> gets four successes so the spirits are slapped aside and she rushes at Baleen. She does not have a, um, a card handy to discard. So she's just going to back up an inch. Sorry, that was a big inch there. I'll just back her up an <laughs> inch. Okay. That's the end of the turn? That. No. No, no, no. Um, I'm going to go back just real quick because I, I forgot to do this. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use that card For to Bilbo, Bilbo okay. and put him back into hiding at the okay. end of his, when he ended his activation over there. Forgot to do that. But that's exactly why I held on to that card to make, make a point of, of the discarding. Um. I was going to ask and I got distracted. You keep distracting me. I distracted lady. my, you distracted me that you, time. You, you so distracted me. With your distracting ways. 
You're such a distraction. You're, you're a distraction. I'm not you're a distraction. distracting. I've me. never been called a distraction in my life. All right. That is a turn. I don't know if we have any recovery checks. We might be able to get through this. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get through this or not. It, it's it's going to come down this last couple turns. But right, thankfully, we added that extra turn. That that could actually be the saver. Uh, light. We lose one of the lights. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't have a black button. I don't know if it's going to matter, but I'm going to put one out there just to keep track. So every once in a while, I think folks ask about things like casting a perilous area. So it's important to note that the perilous area was cast on the table, not on the creature. So that's also why it did not get to resist the perilous area. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you throw a spell on an enemy or at an enemy, then they're going to get to try to resist mm -hmm. your spell. Um, in this case, she was actually just causing that to rise up around the uh, spell. Uh, and it's also why it does not follow right. her either. Right. She just walked through it, slapping the little sprites away. Um, All right, who gets the yellow card? Haley? We already wrote, took out a light. Yep. So this this would potentially be the last turn of the game if we had not added a turn. Yep. This this is turn eight right here. So you see where we're at with, with you know, can we get it done? Who knows? Um, okay, what we're going to have to do here is, I think I have to do Hilly, don't I? Hilly or Spec. We'll do Hilly. Okay. You ready? Yep. Doom and gloom, so light, nearest light goes out, nearest character rolls a horror check. The character nearest to the Borrow Queen rolls a horror check, that'll be uh, Baleen, she passes, passes it. it. Nearest light is already out, so it's irrelevant. An elephant, it's an elephant. It's an elephant. All right, so Hilly can keep going. So Hilly's in range to move over there and try that plot point. And she will. She will move into contact with the final skeleton and challenge it to a riddling contest. One with finesse. One with finesse is not her sweet spot, my dear. Oh. She only has two die six in finesse. This is the peril, mm -hmm. right? Yes. This is the peril. Let's see if she has anything. She has that card that gives her a recovery. And that's it. Okay. Got to get one of these. Bam! Oh, no! So that's going to end her activation with a health check. Sorry, she rolls a D8 for a health check. I'm not going to look at that dice. D8 for a health check. She gets to roll two dice because she is armored. She gets over there, and uh, the shield protects her from the skeleton. Who gets a little too frisky over there. Bilbo's over there. <laughs> what? Bilbo's touching me. Oh, he's, he's doing the puppet? Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Bilbo's going to come out of hiding. And it looks like he's probably within 12 inches. So he, oh, never mind. He doesn't do a horror check. Yep. Maybe I should have done Hilly, though. No, she's out. Oh, oh. She, she's in it. She's within 12 inches. She should have done a horror check. I'll, I'll go back. It's it's not too far, so. I should have done a horror check for Hilly when she moved uh, near the the thingy. She passed it, so all, all remains. Uh, Bilbo comes out of hiding because performing an action takes you out of hiding. So he will come out of hiding long enough to come over here and move into contact with the... Uh, the skeleton and try to do a riddling contest again you always start with a peril one with might and that is about as bad of a draw as you could hope for because 
Uh, oh, Bilbo. he has to... Bilbo has two die eight in might, but it is his hindered uh, stat. So I've got to discard a card if I want to roll two die eight. If I do not discard, then I lose one of those. And I've got to do it, don't I? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to lose my... I don't have a card out here anywhere, do I? Nope. I don't have a card, so I'm going to have to use my stand firm. My stand firm goes away. What are you giving me? That was the decoy for the extra turn. Thanks, Spades. Um, so I'll get my two die eight. And got it. So... That was peril. That now was the plot peril. Point. Plot point is two with might, finesse, or cunning. He's got four die ten in finesse. And he got yes. two. <laughs> that was close, boys and girls. And the plot point is completed. So that means that it's gone. This is turn eight, remember. Like, if we had not extended the game, this would be the last turn. That's how close this is. When the last plot point is, is uh, completed... Did I draw a solo card? I don't remember. I'm not going back at this point, because now I don't remember if I did it or not. Did I forget to draw a solo card for him? I think we did, but it's okay. Okay. You get a blue card. Okay. Okay. Um, when the last plot point is completed... We pick a... We get, we get to pick somebody to be the descendant. Uh-huh. So, unbeknownst to anybody... One of the player characters on the table right now is a descendant of the Borrow Queen. So now we get to pick who it's going to be. I say Valene. I think it's got to be Valene, doesn't it? They were awfully similar roles. Mm hmm. I think it's got to be Valene. And then you place it 1d8 inches from the center of the table in a random direction. Okay. Seven inches off this way. False. Seven inches. So it's definitely not going to. Well, I'm not going to say it. I'll, I'll put it out there first. Seven inches. Let's try. Let's see. Um, I'm going to say that that little spot right there. No. That little corner. Yeah, that little corner. Yeah, okay. So this corner right here is the center of the table. Seven inches. Something like that. Okay. So not this turn. Yeah. So, just remember that. If we had not got the extra turn, there would have been no way that we would have completed this. Because yep. nobody is within range, which is why I started moving those. Once you know the scenario, you know, knowing that it's, it's about to appear, or hoping that it's about to appear, I had to get into position. So, uh, who was that? That was Valene, so she... Or that was Bilbo, so Valene. That was Bilbo. Valene gets to now, go. Now, at the end of his activation, I need to decide if I'm going to put him into hiding, and I am not. The next thing is Spec and Bilbo. Spec and the creature. Wait, Valene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spec and Valene and the creature and the Borrow Queen. Okay, Let's so. Let's shift the camera around so we can see that a little. I think I'm going to do spec next. Okay. He gets a solo card. He gets a solo card and a horror chuck. Yep. So first will be his solo card. Move along. It has no effect. So, yes, there's a card in there that actually does nothing at all. Yeah. But sometimes it's nice to draw it. <laughs> it's like, yay! Nothing happened! 
All right. Uh, Spec is going to have to roll a horror check. Yep. Come on, Spec. All yeah. right. He he is feeling his mustard. And what he's going to do is he, he's going to intercede here. He's going to get between uh, the Borrow Queen and Baleen. Okay. So he's going to position himself as the meat shield. Baleen, I guess, really doesn't need it. But what else is Spec going to do? Yeah. The hero Spec. Uh, and then Baleen is going to move... Uh, Six inches, because this is all dark. If I try to run, I would. She take gets a, a horror check. She gets a horror check. Okay. Uh, D eight. Pass. Whew. Okay. Now her six. Now she's gonna move six inches towards the plot point. She's gonna come up about an inch and a half or inch and uh, three eighths short there. Now the borrow queen. Now the borrow queen eats some spec. Yep. Spec will get another horror check uh, that will test the uh, capacity of his shorts uh, when the borrow queen moves into contact with. They're him. pretty good shorts, I've heard. Well, we'll see. Hope he's got them buttoned. He does. Yeah, he does. Either. All right. And now the Borrow Queen will roll a fistful of dice. There's no way, regardless of... Uh, he would be dodging. Uh, there's no way he's going to dodge what she's throwing out. And he is immediately dropped to the ground. He doesn't even get a health check. Death touch. Okay. Recovery checks? <sighs> All right, Spec. We need you, buddy. Come on, little buddy. Come on, little buddy. Get up. No, oh. we lose Spec. Spec is gone. Okay, all right. So now we're actually starting the last turn of the scenario, and we we're only getting this extra turn because we added that turn yep. from earlier. That's the only reason. Uh, we're gonna lose another light. We only have one light in play, so the last light goes out. Look at that. Darkness, fog is moving in on everyone. This is doom and gloom right here. Doom and gloom. I guess we'll activate Hilly. Hilly. Yeah, we'll activate Hilly. Oh, gosh. Fade in the light. Everywhere is perilous. God dang it. All right. Well, the only thing that matters here... Well, that was Hilly, so... Continue with Hilly? Yeah. Okay. Well, she doesn't have a lot to do. Uh, I guess she would take a peril now. I don't know that it, it really matters that much. Um, it was Might Finesse or Cunning. Okay. Might Finesse. She's got three die eight. Um. Wait. What? That was the peril. Oh, that's so right. You're asking. What? No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. Um. So she could move. Um. I, I don't know that there's any reason to. I guess. Depending on what happens, I guess she'll move six inches this way. Okay. Now is it Valene? I mean, they're both. They're all going to get. They're all going to get one. They're all going to get one. But Valene. What are the chances I draw a surprise twist, though? I don't know. I guess I'll activate Bilbo next. Okay. Uh, watch your head. So that's another peril. Um, roll for the peril below. He's got four die ten. Uh, passed it. it. Now he gets another peril. Foul play. Four die ten. Passed it. it. And. Also move six? I'll try to run. Oh, so we'll get another run. peril. Three with uh, Mike Finesse cutting. Got it. Got it. And run it. he will run 12 inches. I don't have a card that I could put into play. 
Oh, I don't have a card to go into hiding. So he will run 12 inches over there towards Valene. Hmm. All right. Let's see what Valene draws here. Not only is she going to get a peril, first thing that happens is she gets a card double down. Now that's interesting. The enemy nearest to Valene draws two solo cards. There are three solo cards left. So first one on the specter is when it counts. <laughs> okay. The next one it draws is the calm. No character can run, rush, or attack, or shoot. Uh, okay. So uh, the calm is now in play. So the specter is actually calmed right now. The, the borrow queen would not even be able to attack this turn. The last thing that happens is she gets a, um, she gets a uh, peril, peril when she activates. And she fails it. And that's the game. No, no, no! She gets a reroll! She has a card that gives her a plus one to her uh, finesse. Yes! And it passed! <laughs> she got, she drew a reward. One of, her, one of the rewards that she drew gives her a plus one to her finesse. Okay. And then she and so then, then she, she starts her peril and plot point for the major. Yep. Now she's the descendant, so she automatically passes the plot point. Right. Then it pass. Then it is passed automatically. So we're already done. So that's it. Then any of your characters may attempt. However, if the if a descendant attempts the major plot point, then it's passed automatically. Yeah. Okay. So we don't even have to roll. All right. Never mind. Um, so the descendant moves into contact with the major plot point, and that calms uh, the borrow queen, and she is. It's actually has to do with Valene, Valene's blood. Uh, has to be on the uh, item that's lying there in the sand or in the dirt there. She mm -hmm. finds a, a, an old goblet, an old amulet or something, you know, whatever you, you want to have in your story. Uh, and Valene has to put her blood across it. And that is what breaks the curse that had created the Borrow Queen. So, and that... <sighs> It's kind of cool that uh, Valene chased, or or the Borrow Queen chased Valene so much, uh -huh. and then uh, had that connection with her. Kept trying to attack her and kept being repulsed from the attack on her. It all makes kind of a cool little story. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Who? Um. So. I did end up losing one character. I I did I did not Spec? feel like that was going to. It was surprising that Spec lasted as long as he did. No, it he was did surprising good. That, that Spec lasted as long as he did. Uh, is Green Stead like Dracula a mystery? No, uh, I. I I picked, uh, you're exactly right. I did a video that I said that this is how um, I was going to do the Borrow Queen. But I had a different scenario in mind when I was looking at that. And then I decided to do this scenario and it already has an epic character for it. So you're exactly right. She is not statted for this scenario. She is not statted like Dracula or the Count out of the character's book. For this scenario, I went ahead and just used the Hessian. So, hey, Paul, I'm not sure if you were on here when uh, the names were drawn, but you were one of the winners, uh, so make sure that you reach out, or we're going to send you a... Uh, dingle dangle. A dangle. 
So you were one of the winners of the dangles. Uh, so we'll send you one of those. Really, really tough. Really makes you think, you know, it's, it's, there's so many things you have to weigh and so many consequences and so many meaningful decisions. I really don't like those scenarios where everything is just roll on a chart to find out what happens. Like you've really got to think your way through this scenario and everything you do really matters. It's not simply about let's randomly roll to see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty fun scenario. Yeah, really, sure. really a nail biter. Uh, All right. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Are, are you trying to get off of here? I have to go. Okay, then go. Love you. Love you. I'm, I'm still chatting with our folks. Okay. Um, if you'd like to do this with us on a Sunday sometime, get signed up to play with us. Um, if, uh, if you'd like to uh, send us either a Facebook message or an email, you could do that. Um, be sure and get subscribed to our little channel if you're not a subscriber already. Also, um, uh, make sure you've hit that like button and congrats to our winners today. We're going to see you all very, very soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, I got to get the, uh, it'll take a while for me to wake up the computer. Da 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 da